Hi everyone, my name is Juno, I have a health science background, and I'm the author of the book Truth and Empathy, How to Find Your Soulmate. And I'll put a link to the book below. This video is the MBTI, Personality Type Assessment of King Charles III. But before we dive into this topic, I would like to underline something about my book. It is written from a health science point of view, so we'll be looking at the anatomy, physiology, brainwave dominance, and, and also main neurotransmitters and so forth of the 16 MBTI personality types. And based on this information, you can determine your own type, and since I advocate that like attract like, then you know who would be the best match for you. So uh, let's go back to the topic at hand. If we look at the 16 MBTI personality types, they can be grouped into four main ones. The first ones are sensor judgers, the second sensor perceivers, the third intuitive thinkers, and the last one intuitive feelers. To me, Prince Charles is a sensor perceiver, and I will explain why. I have some notes on screen so I don't miss anything. Charles Philip Arthur George is King Charles III of the United Kingdom and the 14 other Commonwealth realms. He was born on November the 14th, 1948 in London, United Kingdom. Charles is the first child of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. He has three younger siblings, Anne, Andrew, and Edward. When Charles turned five, a governess was appointed to oversee his education at Buckingham Palace. Charles then commenced uh, classes at Hill House School in West London on the 7th of November, 1956. He was the first heir apparent to attend school rather than be educated by a private tutor. He did not receive preferential treatment from the school. Elizabeth and Philip were described as physically and emotionally distant parents, and Philip was blamed for his disregard of Charles' sensitive nature, including forcing him to attend Gonstorm, uh, where he was bullied. Uh, it was a school when he was a, a teenager. Charles became the first British heir apparent to earn a university degree, graduating in 1970 from the University of Cambridge with a Bachelor of Arts degree. Charles was created Prince of Wales and Earl of Chester in 1958, and he began uh, taking on public duties, uh, founding the Princess Trust in 1976. Charles served in the Royal Air Force, RAF, and the Royal Navy. During his second year at Cambridge, he received Royal Air Force training. He was presented with his RAF wings in 1971, and in 1977, he was appointed chief of a parachute regiment. In terms of his private life, in his youth, Charles was linked to a number of young women. Uh, Charles first met Lady Diana Spencer in 1977, and they wed in July 1981. They had two children together, Prince William in 1982 and Prince Harry in 1984. Within five years, their marriage was in trouble due to the couple's incompatibility and year 13-year age difference. By November 1986, Charles had uh, fully resumed his affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. Uh, Charles and Diana divorced in August in 1996, and in April 2005, Charles and Camilla married at the civil ceremony. When he became monarch at the age of 73 in May 2023, Charles was the oldest person to do so. Charles has established 16 charitable organizations and now serves as president of each, raising over a hundred million pounds annually. When it comes to his hobbies and advocacy, Charles is very interested in environmental causes and climate change. He has controversially championed alternative medicine. He was an avid player of competitive polo. He enjoys fishing, the arts, literature, and music. Uh, and King Charles III's net worth right now is about $2.2 billion US.
If we look at Charles III's life trajectory, it is different from Mosul because he was born into the royal family, and he uh, many of his choices were uh, you know forced upon him in terms of the schools he could attend, maybe the the people he can spend time with, uh, the woman he can marry, the, even in terms of his career choices. So, in other words, what we'll be looking at is that when he had the the opportunity to select what he wanted, what were uh, his uh, preferred sort of like hobbies and, and also interest. If you look at the subjects that uh, Charles III was attracted to when he was in school, it was the performing arts. So in other words, he liked uh, music, he likes painting, he likes theater, and, and he feels that, you know, he, he can express himself through uh, these different, uh, you know, uh, art forms. So you'll see that people who are sensor perceivers are naturally attracted to entertainment and creativity in general. Uh, so King Charles is someone who's very physically active. So when, in doing his use especially, he liked to play polo. So he's someone who was rather, you know, in shape. And so in other words, you'll see that quite a bit with sensor perceivers because they are tend to be natural athletes. But so that will really you know, point to someone who is very much about entertainment, creativity, uh, thinking outside the box. So whenever uh, King Charles had the opportunity to do so, he would again, uh, you know, venture into these different fields. And also, he he is uh, the open-minded in terms of like alternative medicine. And you'll see that less with someone who's conservative. King Charles also likes to travel, meet new cultures, and you'll see that quite a bit with sense of perceiver because they're attracted by what is different. They don't like uh, things that are already predictable. Uh, they, they want to explore. And the fact that as soon as he was old enough, he traveled all over the world to meet new uh, people, new cultures. And that, again, is in line with a person who's more the creative uh, type. Now, whether or not King Charles is a feminist versus masculine, I would lean more him being a feminist in the sense that people who have met him throughout the years state that he is gentle, kind, empathetic, warm, and this is more in line with someone who's right brain dominant. Even his father wanted to toughen him up, you know, because he felt that Charles was not, you know, assertive enough. So that's why he even sent him to a school that was pretty strict so during his teenage years, and that's where he got bullied. Now, even in terms of his choice, in terms of um, um, his studies, when he went to university, he studied art. So that is, again, is something that you'll see a person who is a feeler would select versus someone who is a, a thinker. Now, whether or not King Charles III is an introvert or extrovert, I would lean more him being an introvert because he's someone who feels energized by being alone or with a few full close friends and family members, which is in contrast with, uh, let's say, Diana, who clearly, you know, came alive when people were focusing on her. So it is a kind of difficult position for King Charles because he has to be king, but it's not something that he really enjoys to having, you know, all people focus on him. I think that Charles III is in a strange position because because uh, the theme of his life as a sense of perceiver is freedom and movement. And the monarchy, in terms of the theme of that particular institution, it is a tradition and duty, which really goes you know, counter to who he is. The other, the other aspect is that he's a feminist, so and feminine energy has to do with cooperation. They don't like necessarily leadership you know, roles, so that again is challenging. And the last one, the fact that he is an introvert. So again, that is difficult because if you're an introvert, you want to not be in the public eye, but being the king of England was well, kind of difficult because you are of censor stage. So for all these reasons, I would say that uh, Prince Charles is most likely an ISFP, just like his son William. So in other words, he probably gets along better with William than with Harry, which is kind of self-evident now. So um, let me know if you agree or disagree with uh, this MBTI personality type assessment by commenting below. If you like this video, if you learned something, please click on the like button. Also, uh, remember to click on the notification bell to be notified of other videos I'm going to be making. Subscribe to my channel and we will talk soon.